Hey there folks, welcome to another edition of Stranger in a Southern Land. I, of course, am your host, Jake Manning. Today in the program, I speak with Matt and Tom of 820 and VBGBs down in the Music Factory here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And, you know, I think you most people listening to this that have attended a concert at the Amphitheater or gone to the Fillmore for any type of event, you know what exactly I'm talking about. They're some of the coolest locations in the Music Factory, which is VBGB's, which, you know, I think most people have stopped in and got a drink at before a show that happens at the Amphitheater or like afterwards after you see a show at the Comedy Zone or anything that goes on in the Music Factory. It's kind of a, a staple, a focal point. And now, you know, Matt and Tom, they've now opened a new restaurant that they're very excited for. Matt's very excited to have a full-size kitchen because I guess the kitchen in VVGB's is like the size of a food truck. Now he has a big kitchen to play with and do all kinds of great stuff, but the thing that they're doing there that's special is pizza. And, and they get into a lot of talk about pizza. They talk about going to a pizza seminar and stuff like that. Like, if you're a lover of pies, you're going to be a lover of this podcast. There's a lot of food talk. I wouldn't listen to this podcast on an empty stomach. I'll tell you that much for sure. Uh, Matt and Tom just very excited to open this up. You know, Tom has been looking at different, you know, restaurants and bars and venues and what he wanted to do. And he just combined all these great ideas into one place in 820. And he's got all kinds of really cool stuff, an arcade room, a karaoke room, and they're all individually uh, compartmentalized, I should say. Uh, that might not be the technical term, but I think they're just little separate rooms where all kinds of cool stuff's going on. And of course, they've got, you know, big plans of what they're going to be rolling out of the kitchen, especially Matt's really excited about that. But, you know, Tom just basically took all his cool ideas and just put it under one roof. So, you know, they do good things over at VBGB's. And I was telling Tom that, like, VBGB's reminds me a lot of a place that I grew up with in my small town where they had a little you know baseball diamonds where they have you know softball tournaments and little league tournaments and stuff like that and then everybody would come up and have pizza and they had concession stands it was just kind of a meeting place in my town every Sunday night or every Tuesday night for a little league tournament or whatever was going on and how that brought communities together and just had fun and stuff like that and I feel like VBGB's is kind of that especially when concerts are going on or especially during the week when they have volleyball tournaments and stuff like that and of course the music factory is growing there's more businesses going in so it's gonna get really busy over there so I, I you know and it's great because Matt and Tom are just great guys and I wish them the best of luck and hope they have as much business as they possibly can handle but you know the opening of A2O is basically them opening the doors to all kinds of great business opportunities and stuff like that like A2O is just really a really cool venue guys like you know if you just like just going out and doing something cool I recommend that you go there no matter if you like good food good drinks good company karaoke arcade all kinds of different stuff like I highly recommend that you go over and check that out guys especially you know if you're down there just to watch a concert or something like that just poke your head in check it out take a look you know grab a slice peace out whatever <laughs> I don't care it's a great place guys and they're really cool people that run it and stuff like that and very active you know that's something you probably go down there you're probably gonna see Tom walking around you'll probably see Matt walking around and stuff like that. So I'm very excited to go back down there and kind of say hey and stuff like that and see how it's going to grow. But I highly recommend that you go check out A2O. But well, before you get there, I'd like you to listen to this podcast and kind of get a feel for it. But if I didn't sell you on it, Matt and Tom will. Because I got to tell you, probably one of the easiest interviews I've done, guys. Like I just gave them a couple of topics and they just went. They just went, they just started talking, Matt and Tom between each other. Kind of even forgot I was there a couple of times, but, but that's okay. Like I said, not very taxing on me whatsoever as an interviewer. So if you're used to my hard hitting questions, my Tom Brokaw like uh, ethics of journalism, uh, you're not going to see that in this podcast. But if you want a lot to talk about pizza, about drinks, and how to have a good time, this is your podcast for sure, guys. You will not be disappointed. That is for sure. But as always, I can't thank the Shining Wizards Network enough for putting me out to as many earballs and eyebuds. Wait a minute, I think I might have got that wrong. Uh, earbuds and eyeballs as always. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate all the work that you do over there at the Shining Wizards Network. Make sure you check them out at shiningwizardsnetwork.com. Com. Also, too, big thank you to my producer, Don, and all the help that he gives me. And, you know, make sure you check him out. He's doing one of my other podcasts, How Did This Get Booked, as well as several other really good podcasts that you should check out at dsct.tv. 
Now, as always, I got a couple of dates I want to feed to you guys and stuff like that. I'm going to try and condense it because we got to get to this wonderful podcast with Matt and Tom. So uh, I don't want to bog you down with too many dates, but I do have some dates that I do want to get out to you guys. Most specifically, Wednesday, October the 12th, I will be returning to Dayton, Ohio at Rockstar Pro. So make sure you check that out. I'm very excited to go back to Dayton, Ohio and wrestling there. Very, very excited about that. Last time I was there, I tore it down with Aaron Williams. So I can't wait to go back and see who I will be facing there Wednesday, October the 12th in Dayton, Ohio at Rockstar Pro. Saturday, October the 12th, I will be performing for PWX in Hickory, North Carolina. Very excited about that show. For more information about that show, make sure you log on to pwxpro.com. Come. Now, Monday, October the 24th, I will be performing for Monstrous Comedy in a feature capacity. I'm usually there every Monday, but this will be me in a feature capacity. That means I'll be doing about 20 to 30 minutes. So that might be all the comedy I have, or at least all the comedy that's worth listening to. I've been working for quite some time to collect some minutes and collect what will possibly be my feature set that I do in the future, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just realize I'm not funny and I'll have to start all over from the drawing board. But if you want to see me crash and burn or fly in the sky like an eagle, I highly recommend that you come out to the station in Plaza Midwood in Charlotte, North Carolina, Monday, October the 24th for Monstrous Comedy. You can look up Monstrous Comedy on Facebook.com. Now, Friday, October the 28th, I will be returning to Pro Wrestling Revolver back in Clive, Iowa. I can't wait to go all the way back to Iowa. I'll be driving all the way there. It's a, always a fun trip. I'll probably be doing some comedy along the way. So very, very excited about that one. So more information about the Pro Wrestling Revolver, make sure you look up ProWrestlingRevolver.com. Also, too, make sure you check out the All Organic Open Mic Tuesday, November the 8th. That is Election Day. Tom Simmons will be in town for this show. He will be the featured act. Just think about it, Tom Simmons, if you know who he is, he is the perfect performer to see, the perfect comedian to see on election night, November the 8th. The show starts at 8.30. For more information about it, make sure you log on to eveningmuse.com. No matter where you lie politically, Tom Simmons is the voice you want to hear election night, no matter how it all goes down. So. Anyways, as always, folks, I got a lot of stuff coming up and it kind of just pop up last second, last minute. You know, I try to record these intros pretty early. So there's probably something that's popped up between now and the time that I've recorded this. So I highly recommend that you follow me on social media at Manscout Manning on Twitter or at Manscout Manning on Instagram. If you have a question about the podcast, make sure you email me at jake at sslshow.com. Or if you're looking for an upcoming wrestling event, make sure you email me at Manscout Manning at yahoo.com. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into this wonderful conversation with Matt and Tom from A2O and BBGBs here on Stranger in a Southern Land. Yeah, we're just going to kind of roll into it, and it is Tom... Tadio. Tadio and Matt... Picard. Picard, okay. Yeah. Usually that's like how most of these interviews start, is me trying to figure out everybody's first last names, but you guys just like, no, Matt and Tom. This is... Yeah, yeah Matt and Tom. Matt and Tom. Keep it simple, especially the, with, with uh, where the location we're at right now, which is 820. 820? 820. Okay, that, that's that's how you want it. Is like it? an 820. Okay, 820. 820. Oh, try to a- be different. Oh, A2O a- a- like oh. that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we, we even spelled it out on our little logo to wait, make people pronounce it right. And understand. Yeah, yeah. I saw that on the Yelp because it was 8 period 2 period O. Oh, so sh- I should have known better. I've th- already, all, already all my research is out the window. Yes. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> yeah, what do I know? <laughs> You're not driving this thing, Tom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We've al- we've already run off the rails. Gotcha. So, but uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for sitting down and talking to me this sure. morning. You know, like this is a f- fantastic f- facility, restaurant, the uh, events hall, whatever this is, arcade, yeah, bar, pizzeria, yeah. everything. Like all in one. Yes. Like like what was the the concept behind eight two zero? The bottom line was um, more adult fun. Um, Everybody likes going to a bar to eat and drink, but then if that's all there is to do, it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. So um, over at BBGB, our other place, we 
one of the few people or one of the first people in Charlotte to really give people things to do. We put out, you know, seven or eight cornhole boards and two ping pong tables and giant Jenga and giant games. And it became kind of this adult playland. So when we built our new place, we wanted to just continue that. So, but we want to do something different. That's big open spaces. This is small compartmentalized spaces. So um, some of my favorite places are um, game arcades and, um, you know, pizza and, um, the weird thing is the karaoke, which is the big hit here, is not something that I love. Um, <laughs> I'm life, scared to death of it. I've always avoided karaoke. Um, and then one time I was in New Orleans and went with a bunch of people and was dragged into a bar. And I actually enjoyed it. And the reason I enjoyed it was when your friends are up there and it's kind of fun and they're being silly, mm-hmm. that's fun. But once you're done, you're kind of like, ah, get me out of this karaoke bar. Um, yeah, it's kind of like an open mic. I did my minutes. I'm right, done. Let me like leave. My friends are funny, <laughs> but the rest of you people are not. Yeah. So there was a back room. I was like, ah, this is the ultimate idea for karaoke is you can get away from it. Mm-hmm. So when we built our karaoke lounge here, we... Um, Put in bullet, bulletproof. Yeah, we put in bulletproof. Bullet, bullet, just, just for that guy who's really bad. <laughs> double, double, pane, double pane glass and double insulation. And so, if you're inside the room, you're in the middle of it. If you step one foot outside the room, close the door, you're in a completely different space and you don't hear it at all. So, everybody loves that angle. I hear it from tons of couples and people going, "Oh, this is awesome!" Because my wife will spend all night in there and I don't want to sit with her. Mm-hmm. So. That's kind of the fun. The game arcade's the same way. Uh, the event space is the same way. Everything is very soundproof in its own world. Every space has its own music, its own vibe, which I don't think I've ever been to a bar where every time you walk into a different room, there's a different atmosphere, a different look, a different color, and a different music going on. So I don't know. I just built to what I like. You know? I didn't try to fit in or do anything that anybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just try to have little like compartments, you know? Yeah, set up that way. I think the reality of 820 for me is is really funny from an outside perspective because to watch you and all the things that you've said and your visions and ideas for like the past few years kind of all came together into one it did massive it <laughs> did yeah and I don't you, think so you're just spitballing and you put it under one roof well, to be that way but I think that the way yeah, it turned out we hilarious. talked about food trucks uh-huh. we had talked about just event space we you know we didn't want to do food so hard, you know. We didn't want to do it. I mean, at one point in time, you wanted to put a slice window next Correct. door at VBGB, and I was always any new idea you ever had. I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, we could do that. Let's do Which that. Just kind of funny because like, most of our little our other ideas over the last five years were these little things, and then also we went as big as you could go. Exactly. <laughs> we, um, but you know, pizza was a fun way to go. We thought it was kind of simple, which it is. Yeah. And we're happy with you know pizza and meatballs and um, keeping the food real simple it was really important to us over here because it really is difficult to have good food consistently all the time for years and years and years. Yeah, and just taking like that kind of New York street fair where we're slinging slices and we got like the European style palm frites and, um, you know, meatballs in a cup with a breadstick. It's just super simple and it's, 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 a, it's a slice house mentality, but it's that cool, fast, casual sort of hip thing that people are digging where it's, it's not too fancy, but the food is, is outstanding at the same time, you know. So uh, that's something we've pride ourselves and next door and to take it over here but to do something different for me has been super awesome and and to watch everyone really dig it like i think we underwhelm people always with the presentation and overwhelm with the actual food yeah that's one of those um you know yeah because matt likes to call our food over at the other place at bbgb um gourmet concession food yeah sexy food and paper baskets (laughs) (laughs) so we kind of carried that forward here you know you got this paper plate and you know this slice and then you're like oh my god this is it's outstanding yeah, it's yeah that's usually delicious. that that was my interaction especially going over to vbgb's because obviously i went over there when i used to drink a lot i was like yeah this is where i would go because all kinds of drinks but like there's like oh this food like just a little window like is that going to be any good right you know and then like come to find out i've eaten off a couple of people's plates before i'm like oh this is really good <laughs> I, love like, that. I love that so much because it's I, I feel like when we first started, that was what people thought. It was yeah. almost like, huh? I, do they even really have food up there? I'm not even really sure what's going I on. I mean, we didn't even, uh, now we have a giant sign that says eat. Like, yeah. hey, this is a kitchen. Because it was kind of like, yeah, I didn't, I've come here to drink and drink craft beer, and maybe I'll get a snack. And then now we've come a, a full on restaurant. I mean, it's we have blown up. We do a ridiculous amount of catering, and we have a ton of people that just come to eat, and maybe they grab a beer, but we've really become an uptown restaurant. So, mm-hmm. along with, you know, the beer garden. And, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a killer transition. Cool craft beers in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And there was three breweries when we started in Charlotte, and now there's 14. 
I can't even count how many. Yeah, point. they keep Time popping now. up. They just yeah. it's it's like triples. You know what I'm saying? They just pop People up. People say, day. "Is there room for more?" I'm like, "Yeah, I went to Denver. That 85." <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it creates good competition, and it also is the strong will survive. Yeah, yeah. This is very true. It's like we, and we haven't seen the bubble burst yet. You no, know you can't saying? be average. I think you're going to have to be really good and produce more than just quality beer. Um, you're going to have to produce a location and you know possibly food. Or and it's really know, with anything you do these days because people are more drawn to things like what we're doing and independent businesses and dining and local beers and stuff versus the the chain restaurant fad that you know right. hit hard in the 90s and that was everyone's thing now it's kind of going back which is was great for people and entrepreneurs and people that want to start their own thing um it, it's really nice to see it go back that direction to sure. be honest man like when i go out and i eat i I just try to look for the the next coolest local thing that i haven't tried yet you know every time sure. and just kind of check That's it off the list and you know, support the movement, especially in our hometown. I mean, I love Charlotte. So to see us grow, you right. know, as a community has been super awesome in the past few years. It really has kind of blown up. It's so. huge. Uptown is crazy busy. So, uh, And offering a place for families and dogs. And that's kind of rare. You know, we get, we have two kids ourselves, uh, my wife, Karen, and I, uh, who is the other owner and uh, mastermind behind a lot of the stronger things that happen uh, throughout our businesses and certainly the food and the, the organization of it all and um but the um the family friendly location um a lot of here here's what we hear every day wow my kids can actually play a game or do something and you know um i can talk to my husband so mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing is what you know so we kind of try to bring all that stuff um over here, although we are 21 and over over here, we st we try to bring the mentality of, hey, we've done a lot, a big thing for the community over there, and offering dogs and kids over here. We're trying to be a little more dull, but um, we we feel that we were filling a, a void in in Charlotte that was kind of missing in the early days, which was you know big craft beer um, and adult entertainment. You know, sitting in a bar is good, but it can you know more fun when you have things to do oh absolutely i mean it, it, people will stay longer and hang out and then and that's what we want it's kind of like you know we want you to come hang out and chill this is, this is our house right. welcome you know like, we are, we're hoping eventually in the in the near future this a2o will become the place you do come for dinner. right now it's still a slice of pizza at the end of the night or maybe here a little bit at dinner time where i think it'll build like bbgb did which was eventually people will come here full on to have dinner and it'll become more of a, a restaurant vibe then late night it becomes a, a bar yeah so. yeah and that's the funny thing about vbgb and stuff like that you guys got like like the sand vo volleyball right like set up outside and like i see people like going there constantly so it's almost like a recreational yeah. thing like hey our night is where we play sand volleyball is monday night and people will go there and then they'll eat and it's it's very reminiscent to something harking back to when i grew up in a small town in iowa uh a guy you know he started a pizza place and his idea was to put up uh, softball fields and sure. little, and a little league diamond. So we'd always have these little league tournaments. And his idea is he would host a little league tournament. People would come over and eat his pizza, pizza in the restaurant at night. And then, of course, Sunday night was uh, softball. So everybody in town that used to be baseball players that are now like 30, 40 year old sure. men are playing there. But then the kids are running around playing on the playground, eating the pizza. So it's like either eat pizza before the game or after the game but he's always got he's got a concession stand down by the baseball stadium and then he's got the restaurant at the top of the Perfect, hill right so it's very it reminds me very much of that right. yeah and that was always the center thing of the entire town like everybody was at gino's on sunday right in preston it becomes iowa an event it becomes yes an event. something that's, fun to that's go and cool, do you know I, I don't, i'm all for that and you know we have the big open space here it's funny because somebody said to me not too long ago um you know how long before you think somebody copies you know the things you're doing over here and I said, well, I don't know how they're ever going to copy VBGB because it's going to be very hard. Because the, finding the space, yeah, is yeah, the yeah. hard part. It's all taken in uptown and South End and, and stuff like that. So having the idea of a big patio is, you know, they're going to end up in a suburb, which will be no competition. And over here, could people do what we're doing? Yeah, I don't know. I just yeah, this close uptown that. is going to be very hard to do. I mean, anything like that would be end up in Matthews or Concord. Correct. You know Correct. what I'm saying? So, which is a whole half an hour away. You know. Yeah. No, we're trying to create a whole little compound down here on the back side of the music factory. It's not a bad gig. I mean, you have the amphitheater behind us, so you get right. to hear cool tunes coming yeah, through the kitchen door. A lot door of the rock stars come here and eat and yeah. hang out after. Um, that's 
pretty popular. Bar, Fillmore so. shows are great. Comedy Zone up the street. Now the the underground. I mean, it's just keep bringing more music and fun stuff to the music Which factory. Brings people from out of town, and then they Google like if you're going if you're going out of town, you Google the area, and then you find this you know four and a half star rated place, and you go, well, I'm definitely gonna check that out, and then we gain new fans. So. Yeah, that's what's unique about this location and stuff like that, because probably. I'd say a large percentage of the people that walk into VBGVs for the first time are 820. It's six years in. I'm kind of surprised how many people are still first timers. Yeah, right. but, but it's probably um, the first time because it's a concert. You know what I'm saying? Correct, and sure. they're finally going to the first concert here. Correct. And then they just happen to stumble over here. And then you're getting them to come back on like a Tuesday, like an off Tuesday of performance. I've seen that for many years. People that were either came, came for a concert or brought to um, our place by an event. I get that all the time. And it, it's, you know, I was just. Um, married last year and I started to meet a lot of her family and stuff and they're like oh yeah oh VBGV the music factory I was down there for a concert are you the chef there oh, I didn't know that oh yeah we went in there we ate before the show and just I run into people on the streets constantly that that's how they they heard right. of us and that's how they they did it so word of mouth is always the strongest mm -hmm. advertising you don't open a magazine or a newspaper and see an ad and go, man, I got to turn my car on right now and go who to that place. Mm -hmm. When your friends on Facebook go, man, this place was unbelievable. I had the best time. It was so cool. You're certainly motivated mm -hmm. by that. So we've never really put, I don't know, I, I really would say four or $500 a year into advertising in any way yeah because you you obviously have like a, a large amphitheater that people are going to come down <laughs> right. they're going to be spending Sorry. lots of money on 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 advertising so there there's going to be people walking by correct yeah i mean even i remember when i was saw jim gaffigan up here there was a line right by your restaurant right. yes. of a thousand people yeah, that people awesome. go what's that like huh what's right. you know like they might not come the first time but they'll come the next time and the next time they're I'm curious like, i didn't know there was a place here i guess next time i'll come there and drink yeah so um we put the pizza window right out by the gates over there, so we'll, that'll, that'll, that'll start catching on pretty fast, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but I mean, you could have just been happy with just VBGV over here. We like, could have, yeah. um, you know, the, the the biggest problem was VBGV was designed, and you know, I had a lot to do with the design, so um, I planned on it being kind of snacks. I didn't plan on it being an uptown restaurant or um, the massive amount of catering that we do. Yeah. We do a massive amount of catering, and um, the kitchen is you know as big as this booth. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we'll, I mean, our guys, when they're working over there, have to touch and rub shoulders. There is the, there's the only way to do it is to be bumper to bumper. And, you know, it was designed for probably three guys in the kitchen on the line and two guys in the back. And we put like six guys in the kitchen and five guys in the back. And, you know, every single time anybody passes through the kitchen, it's, excuse me, pardon oh, it's, me behind you, bump, excuse me, sorry, dude. It's, uh, un, it's unreal. It's probably one of the smallest kitchens I've ever worked in. And absolutely. I, I compare it to kind of like someone just drove a food truck into the side of the building because Correct. I mean equipment wise and size wise that's what we're working with. Right. Um, when we first when I first came on with you guys six months after you opened it was literally me and and two other dudes and we do all the dishes all the prep and all cook online and and now to have the you know twenty people on staff and uh, most nights you know on busy concert in night in the kitchen alone yeah. yeah. Um, you know most lights running a you know four in the back and six online and stuff like that is. I mean, we had to come up with a whole new philosophy, and it was culinary kung fu because it was the art of no wasted movement. <laughs> like, you can't, you have to turn in a circle and be doing something the entire time uh, in order to work efficiently in that kitchen. And um, everybody has bruises on their knees from opening right. the drawers. and. But it's a, it, I got to tell you, it is a blast. It is one of the funnest kitchens I've ever worked in in my entire life. The energy level stays super high. Yeah. Um, there's no room for bad moods or bad attitudes because in a space that small, it's it's like cancer. It's gonna be exposed. It's like, dude, get out of here with that. Like, all we can do is have fun right now mm -hmm. and rock out. That'll so. be me running through, going, "Okay, Red Bull for everyone here. Yeah, you go, guys, <laughs> pick it up a little bit." Um, but that's so our first motivation to build this place, A2O, was the kitchen, mm -hmm. the kitchen and the event space. We needed more event space. Um, we have a huge roster of people that do parties at VBGB and have for five years. Um, so they're always looking to do more and they want to do takeover parties on a Friday night, 300 people who, who wants to turn that down. Yeah. But you can't come into your favorite bar on a Friday night and it says every table says reserve for reserve for reserve for reserve for reserve for that's how you, you know, put your business in the yeah. nose dives because eventually people go, ah, you know what? I can never get a seat anymore. So we talked about this in the early stages, my wife and I, Kara, and we said, we're not going to do that. We're, well, I'll reserve a few tables, but there's a percentage 
more percentage on Tuesday, Wednesday, less on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. But who wants to turn down another party of 100, 200? And everybody wants to do a party on a yeah, Friday, the more Saturday. more the merrier, in my opinion. So we're like, let's build a big kitchen and a big event space. That was motivation number one for A2O. Not, then it was kind of like, you know, what do we do with the rest? So I was like, all right, here's every other idea I've ever wanted to do <laughs> in a bar. And we're going to dump them all into one space. We're going to put in a karaoke lounge. We're going to put in a game arcade. Yeah. We're going to put in a pizza parlor. And we're going to have this cool, stylish uh, look to the rest of it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and we, when we're talking about spaces, like, you know, when I when I heard this was opening up and I was just kind of looking like, where in the music factory would this be located? Because obviously space here is kind of a premium and it's it's a very unique space because it's, like, it's like an old factory. There's right. all kinds of different things. Like what would this space used to be before you? So you in the in early here? days, of course, in the very, very early days, it was part of a textile mill. That's the whole factory was a textile yeah. mill. And then um, over the years, um, there was these band rehearsal rooms in this particular space. Okay, so um, that was with this bit. Well, I'm, it's, I'm, kinda, it's confusing to people uh, because... Because I remember uh, hearing about that space, but I didn't know it anywhere exactly where Queen it was. Queen City well, Underground? It was called the Queen City Underground, okay. and there was the band rehearsal rooms, and they were little cubicles, somewhere 8 by 10, somewhere 20 by 30, and your band would come in and you would rehearse and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and that's kind of all it was. It was kind of renting a locker. Um, but five years ago, they moved that space um, under the Fillmore. That's the part people don't understand because the door to come in was still right across from VBGB. And it's the door that they use is the same, even though it's a different space. Mm -hmm. So people go, well, those wasn't those band rooms there? And I'm like, yeah, but those band rooms moved five years ago. Yeah, the so gone. Um, same concept though, but uh, you know, th those are all long gone. Um, Avid Exchange has put offices in there and taken over um, all the bar space and all the um, underground space and all the space under the Fillmore and just put offices, which is, we love the idea of, you know, more corporate, business and daytime business uh, they're great they come over they eat they drink they're you know uh, mellow people and you know as, as a bar owner who wants another bar moving in who wants yeah. more competition i'd rather just take uh you know some just nice people during the day that like you know eventually we'll eat we'll open up more for lunch when they finish their big building which will hold a thousand people which i've been told they're about to sign for a second building <laughs> two thousand people wouldn't be so bad for lunch I agree. I agree completely. And I, the thing I like about it is um, it, it builds like regulars. And I like right. regulars because I like seeing the same faces and I like talking to them and, you know, talk about food and to see them get excited about it in the place and then tell people and bring their friends back and say, hey, this this Chef Matt, that's, uh, you know, so-and-so and this Tom. And it's just exciting. And Avid Exchange has definitely brought that to the table for us. And the volleyball, I mean, has been huge. There's the right. volleyball, does the volleyball people hair. are some of my favorite people on the planet. They're always happy. Why? They're just having a good time doing what they're doing. And then yeah. they want to eat afterwards and they want to drink. And uh, it was last Saturday. It really lit me up. They finally all came over here. Uh, yeah, it took a while, right? They took saved it. Yeah, yeah. They, they're so loyal to VBGB and they have the routine. They, they know what they like. But they finally came to see me in my food window Saturday. And it was so nice to just have the familiar faces back and to get me excited. And, you know, you're working the long hours. Sometimes you're tired, but you can't remember, man. You still love what you do and you're still excited to be doing it. Yeah. And all them coming over Saturday was super awesome. And Last they, night, there were, you, were, you were gone, but there was a lot of volleyball players. They're finally making it over Starting to venture and over into something new. Develop a new routine. It's hard to watch. So. When pizza's 50 feet across the parking lot, it's hard to... Oh, don't tell yeah. me about Eventually, it. they're going to become, you know, huge fans. It's like I was telling you, it's about to be pizza season, so I wouldn't even worry about yeah, it. Pizza it's about season. to cool off outside. I don't know if pizza season. I can eat pizza 24-7. <laughs> I tell me, my girlfriend works at Mellow Mushroom of Town, so oh, she's God. constantly... <laughs> like, last night, it was like either... I was like, gosh, should I put some, like, chicken? in the oven or should I just like heat up some pizza like no I'll just heat up some pizza I'll just do that yeah who cares about abs I, when, I lived in Man, when I lived in Manhattan I couldn't walk by a place without getting a slice I mean I, I probably ate slices of pizza four days a week living in Manhattan I just had to I just can't walk when by this whole it. idea came about I was obsessed and I was trying everybody's pizza because we were developing our own dough here so it was like I became dough obsessed so everywhere I went oh, well I guess I got it's research I got to try the pizza so I think I went like six months straight <laughs> eating pizza pretty I have much to eat pizza. I have every to. day <laughs> it's my job we went to the Las Vegas uh, pizza convention in February or March. I can't remember March, when it yeah. was. Oh my gosh! I mean, they talk do about really do experience. have every type of convention. <laughs> uh, oh, it's and amazing. I went to the International Pizza Expo, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it was um, very informative, super educational. Uh, we didn't well, know what, what type of things that makes it informal. What are they? Well, teaching? we did. You know, day one, we signed up for a seminar. 
Uh, we knew nothing about how to make pizza. It's a, you know, obviously there's dough and sauce, but what makes one pizza so much better and so much different from another? So, um, our first seminar was uh, Tony Giamatti, yep. the nine-time world pizza champ. And so day one, seminar one, the first person we ever listened to about here's what good pizza is and here's how to make it was him. So it was kind of like a great training, like floor. You know, Tony was. Tony Gemignani is amazing and. Uh, we have the pizza Bible. Tom actually purchased the pizza Bible and let me borrow it. And, um, it's actually, I've, I've only read the first 33 pages probably over and over and over again because it's all about dough development and right. cell structure and the crumb and just all nerdy pizza talk. But um, So, I mean, I've been doing this since I'm 35. I've been doing this since I was 16 and never touched a dough or, or pizza right. or anything. World. But I've always, you know, been super curious. And so, of course, as soon as he starts talking about it, then... The obsession begins so day one we're just we're sitting there in Gemignani's seminar and I'm just scribbling scribbling right. scribbling scribbling notes 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 and listening and watching and taking it all in um, but the, he made it look so simple oh yeah he was like you know here's the dough and here's you got to use this kind of flour it's very important and here's the consistency of it you got to touch it and feel it and consistency and then and then the, the sauce you were I was expecting you know all these combinations and all these ingredients and it was so basic it really is it's like it's kind of like the basic of all food if you use really good quality ingredients you're 95 percent of the way there absolutely and almost any food you know what i mean and and they were big on keep it simple stupid that every pizza seminar we went to was just keep it simple quit putting 18 layers and 47 ingredients and so much spice and no that's not what great pizza is and he's absolutely right as far as that's concerned and that's the philosophy that we took with our pizzas um it's just it's super funny and weird now because it's almost like he jedi mind tricked me <laughs> tony gemignano was like you will make this pizza it like will this. be like this it will come and i was like yeah yeah, yeah. well and then we go back home and try it and i was like this pizza's awesome <laughs> so <laughs> you know my, right <laughs> Karen, my wife and i went to um to brooklyn uh, we took a trip up there because you know it's known for the best pizza in the world, right? So mm -hmm. we went to these really weird, obscure Brooklyn places. One that like you know only 30 people at a time can get in, and they're making pizza on this little table by candlelight with wine bottles. And you're like, really? It's so cool and dark, and like, and you had to wait you know two hours to get in and drink at a bar down the street because there's not even a place to wait. And, and then we went to this place in a warehouse district called uh, Roberta. And, you know, from the outside, you're like, really, I, I don't know if I can go in this place. It looks super scary. But you go inside, and it was just amazing pizza. But we kind of had that, you know, you had to get that flavor profile in your mouth. Ah, this is, I agree, this is amazing flavor. This is what we want. This is how we, where we want to go. In the end, we want our pizza to be in the ballpark of this kind of flavor profile. So when we made the first two pizzas here, it wasn't quite there yet. It wasn't, no. it wasn't hitting what Karen and I wanted. It wasn't hitting what uh -huh. Matt wanted. And we've always agreed in the end on food that's kind of Absolutely. the thing between Kara, Matt and I we've always like our f flavor profiles and what we like out of food has always been in the, you know we don't ever struggle we, we definitely Kara will set the stage and hand it to Matt and Matt will go off and add another layer to it and then she'll come back and say this and that I'll put my two cents in and we we always end up with something that makes us happy but she um, we weren't really um, we, oh, we it, struggled a little bit at, at getting it what everybody wanted yeah I wanted what Matt wanted what Kara wanted and somehow we kind of in the end we said why don't we just do all of it was a mashup. It was a mashup. It really was. Like, let's get your crust, your amount of sauce, your amount of cheese, your, and just we kind of really, one day Carol was, we were kind of testing, she's like, just put it, put everybody's idea on one slice and let's try it. And it worked. And once you bite into it and finally smile and you're super happy, that's, that's when you know. Right. I made a ton of crappy pizza at first. <laughs> it wasn't no, like, I disagree. I, I it wasn't it was, like I nailed it. I don't think it was, you try. know, I don't think it was generic, cheesy, yeah. frozen or, you know, Domino's. Yes, I'm going to go there. I, it was definitely like, do. oh, we're, we're hard, <laughs> we're hard on ourselves. It was ourselves. definitely good. It was, it was pizza that I go, okay, I've eaten a lot of pizza that I thought that that was pretty good, if not better. I thought we were already up here as far as the the pizza goes you know comparing in charlotte i knew we could bring it way up here but you know i don't call it crappy i was like hey that's pretty good you know this is a good start and we're just it's, it's such a company that strives for perfection with no matter what we're doing whether crap. it's pizza or you know our wings next door or whatever it is we're always trying to to push ourselves and be the best and for me the newness of pizza was so frightening <sighs> to begin with and stuff like that but once we finally nailed it it was it was well worth it and true then the rest kind of just fell in the place. It was pretty easy, but 
we, we brought these meatballs back from the pizza convention. Oh, yeah. That we had tried. And we were like, there's no way you can buy a product. You have to make everything. Because it's what we do. We try TV. to. And then yeah. we, we ate this meatball from Fontanini. Fontanini meatballs. And um, we we're like, oh, man, that's really good. I was like, why should I make it? This meatball is awesome. And, we were, and then we we're like, let's order some from the rep. Because maybe it's just because the convention. Somehow they're doing something to it that's... We got to bring it back to our place and our ovens and try it. And yeah. it was still amazing. And we're like, I can't believe it. And, you know, I kind of like the smart purchasing and the branding of it all. And while we were at the pizza convention in Vegas, one of the, the cool things that the, the chefs do out there, the pizza chefs, is they, their jackets look like NASCAR jackets. They do. <laughs> They've got like all their brands and yeah, sponsors. Really, they and labels. really do look like so NASCAR. Like, you know, they're proud of the cheese they use and they're proud of the sauce that they right. use and the, the meatballs they use and stuff like that. And I, I was that kind of you know helped me say hey you don't have to make everything you know kind of embrace the industry you're in and that's right. kind of the the pizza route it's like if you develop your awesome dough and your right. crust and that's your signature and that's right. what you choose to sink your energy into the rest is smart purchasing and and not putting a bunch of crummy cheap and there are people that make their, their own pizza. like mozzarella so. and cheeses and stuff um, um, yeah, although exactly. you know nine-time world pizza champ doesn't right, right most right. award-winning pizza isn't there's just a couple brands that everybody uses and and it's expensive and that's yeah. the bottom line why doesn't everybody just buy the same ingredients it's expensive yeah exactly and, and they don't want to charge the you know i think in the end it's any product on the planet you go wow that might be pricey but if you love it you totally forget mm -hmm. how much it costs and you totally justify you know oh, an amazing um, steak or something or an amazing you know Thing, so. goes for anything really yeah and it's it's funny that you bring up about, about the cheese and stuff like that back to the gino's pizza you know restaurant we had a creamery in town and of course i was very close to wisconsin and similar topography that you can get kind of wisconsin dairy in that area and we had a creamery in town and the pizza place gino's was like hey i want my mozzarella to be this consistency and this ingredients and stuff like so he made his own mozzarella had his own mozzarella uh, custom made that's awesome. that's in, in the creamery awesome. in town that's awesome you know, and reaching out to like local businesses, like, hey, I'd prefer it to be like this. I, that's amazing, and I'm sure I love stuff like that. It's phenomenal, um, man. That's it. Seems like a lot of work too. It's also one of those. You know, <laughs> sometimes there's just really good quality products out there. That's, I, you know, I'm not saying someday we wouldn't make some and put it on a pie and and try it. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Things but, we could do. Who knows, right? Right. Yeah, but you get you get the groundwork for good pizza. And stuff Correct. like that. You got you got you got all all this stuff laid out and stuff like that. But like, let's, let's take it even a step further back. Like you guys, like I've really had to just sit back here in a corner while you guys talk about like restaurants <laughs> and food. Like you I don't get, really you, know how it happened. You but yeah. you guys have made this this very easy for me. Where does this passion come from? Like you know this right here. Where does it come? Where you know this is obviously what you guys want to do. Like this would be like me. This is like you, Tom, interviewing me and another wrestler right now. You'd be <laughs> sitting over in the corner and we'd be talking wrestling. But where does this passion come from with you guys, as far as like restaurants? I'm and not food? talk about food that way. It's it's not even really just food, and I can speak for Tom a little bit on this too. Like Tom and I are both extremely creative-minded people, so it's just how we channel our energy, and we just so happen to start channeling it into this a few years ago. Um, I was a musician. Tom worked in films. Um, you know, it came, at some point in time, we became family men, and then we had to take our creative energy and put it into something else. And we well just so happened to kind of meet at the same time, and that's where it went. Um, that is well put. You know, I always cooked my whole life, and that's I was a cook, you know. And then until the past 10 years, I started to get real creative and have creative freedom and um, run kitchens and be more of a chef. But... Uh, you know, when I became a dad, it was like, oh, dude, no more. Put the guitar down for a little while, be a dad and, you know, do what it takes. And then I just, I still have to be creative. I still had to put it into something. Uh, I'm a bit obsessive over things at times. You know, I consider myself more of a concept chef than anything. I, I need something to focus on. What do you mean um, by concept chef? What so I, I love working with parties and, and focusing on what people want specifically so if that's with a restaurant owner or with a catered party or something someone says matt i want you to do this i can't sleep i need to go home i need to look up how to do it i need to find out you know what fits the theme the best like i, I dive all into one thing at one time and become obsessed with it and then knock it out of the park pretty much um so obviously i mean we've been talking about pizza all morning that's the last project that was presented to me and kind of the obsession that I had to dive into. 
a lot of chefs like to do all sorts of things and stuff like that i really like to focus on one thing at a time and really just blow it away i mean more than anything like put all my effort into something and then master it and then move on right. so you know we did bar fair and bar food across the street for the past few years and i really feel like we developed an awesome menu mm -hmm. um and have a killer crowd and that's what i focused on for a few years and and now this is my new project and i hope to do the same thing you know so you're always mentally active. You've now moved on to the next challenge and stuff like that. I, I find it hard to sleep sometimes <laughs> <laughs> until something is done or complete or I've, I've, I've given it everything I have. And But restaurant work is never complete. There's going like to be somebody in tomorrow exactly. and there's something else you have to I do. I know, and that's why the catered <clears throat> parties are so awesome too because the catered parties focus on different menus that, that we create too. So it's like it right. keeps that ball rolling and stuff like that. I love weddings because weddings are a little more – specific for yeah. people's needs they're like oh i really want this really want that i'm like oh cool but it's high pressure though because so. if you mess this up this is it's the their special day, it's day. It's their it's special we day. always <laughs> test them on it first uh, we also have a, um, a gm who has a strong kitchen and cooking background oh yeah scott's scott awesome. and scott and yeah. matt have worked well together um and have helped develop a lot of the the flavors for a20 not for yeah. gb that was more matt and and kara and not kara had a big hand in this too but uh, matt and um um Scott definitely did um, a lot of the development. Dude, meeting and, Scott was awesome because uh, it was somebody who had the same skill set and had been doing it for just as long and loved it the way I did. And when I work with Scott, it's like dancing. Like we don't even really have to talk in a kitchen. It's right. He will take our task list, separate it, and then we'll just go and then we'll try each other's stuff. And um, he's super talented. So like yeah. to have somebody side yeah. by side to help me develop the things that I want to do. And, and the same thing, we just feed off each other. Uh, so that's been really nice about this project. Um, I haven't got to work on a lot of projects with somebody, so right. like working with Scott on this you has guys work great together been too, a great so. experience for me yeah. overall. What about you, Tom? The idea of like just opening up restaurants and like, ah, let's do this with this. And where, where does that passion come from? Uh, to me, it was the, um, you know, I used to work on commercials and music videos for a lot of years and probably did about 150 music videos when I lived in LA. And uh, for who? Uh, you know, Back in the early 90s, um, kind of gave my age away right there. Um, <laughs> I, um, I worked for a big music video director named Lionel C. Martin. So we did um, Tupac and Dre and, and Snoop and um, hey, stuff like the lot Backstreet of NWA Boys. NWA and, and NW, I worked on NWA videos and Easy E. So I was kind of like, uh, I worked on the early rap scene. Um, I ran the set. And um, set being either a pool or a street with a car, it's usually about the set, pretty similar tropes. Uh, you know, we had to I had to bring a crew of 60, 80, or 100 people out to a location in Malibu or something, set it all up, figure out how it was all going to work, all the logistics, schedule everybody, figure out you know everybody's uh, position in you know, hey, we're in a house, so where's the wardrobe going to be? Where are we going to eat lunch? How do, are we bringing our own tables and chairs? You know, every little thing had to be figured out, and then we did. Um, and, and that was kind of my job. So I did that for a lot of years. And um, but same thing, you know. Once you, that, I moved to New York, and I was kind of doing short films and kind of getting into feature films and stuff, music videos. And met my wife and had a family, and you kind of just switch gears and you're like I can't go run around doing this anymore. So, mm -hmm. but I can um, see how restaurant work would be appealing because it's you are creating well, environments and I worked in restaurants throughout my whole life. You know, I think my first job was in like '87 uh -huh. at an O Charlie's in Nashville where I went to college. So um, I've always had restaurants in my background. So it's kind of something you know, and you do what you know. Mm -hmm. and kind of the bottom line: a lot of businesses do you know stick with what you know. And my wife, my wife ran a hotel, Kara ran a hotel in uh, Manhattan. And um, it was more than just kind of running a hotel. Hotel. It was kind of like a, a beat up old, you know, rundown crack hotel. And she turned it into a three star, you know, Upper West Side hotel. Mm -hmm. So she has that ability. That's what she is. So I was like, you know, we need to be doing our own thing here, and making genius. money for everybody else. Yeah, she's yeah. just a genius. And we should start doing our own thing. So it took me a while to talk her into it. But my creative side came out because I could build these places. I could design these places. I could, and even when we were done building VBGB, I continued to work on it, upgrade it, change the lighting, add stuff, create problem solving. Hey, this isn't working. How do we make this more efficient? How do we make less steps? How do we rebuild the bar? You know, so that stuff satisfies my creative side. And then, okay, five years later, I'm kind of like, all right, I've pretty much <laughs> got that place to where I'm done adding little things. And I'm kind of like, all right, you know, and then the need and the sassy came to, we really need to fix the kitchen and need more event space and we're like can we do this can we afford this can we actually open another business over here and somebody was going to open another business and be our competition so yeah we're like might as well be us so then you know whole another year of 
cool. I got a whole new space. I get to create, design, plan it all out, you know. And, you know, Kara has a lot of input, but I kind of, I start with the basics, you know. Where the, you know, I used to walk everybody through this warehouse space when it was nothing and say, this is where the karaoke room is going to be and here's where the game arcade is going to be. And they're all like, yeah, Tommy, I can envision that. And, you know, I'm the only one that had it all in my head. It's super cool to watch how it, it come was together. Laid out and how it was going to function and how it was going to look and how the brick was going to be. And then, you know, throughout the... The process, you know, Kara had an idea. Hey, let's add this. Hey, let's do this in white brick. Hey, let's, you know, be, yeah, you know. So we definitely come together on a lot of those ideas. We changed the look of the event room at the last minute with, to a, like a Soho loft idea, but that wasn't, you know, the original plan. So I'm not the complete mastermind by any ways, um, but um, you know, I can go through my phone right now and I can show you um, the karaoke lounge. Um, picture that I took in New Orleans that ended up looking just like this. I can show you a game room. I can show you that bar when Matt and I went in um, Vegas that looks just like that. I can show you the oh, yeah. lighting fixture that I saw in a magazine that I saved. I can show you, you know, um, um, the, um, the lighting fixtures. So throughout my uh, creative process I see things and I go, ah, that's, you know, I can show you the, the picture that was the inspiration for the, the secret library. Mm -hmm. so I literally have all these thoughts in my head and I click them or I find them and I put them in my phone and then build it. So it literally is, there's an inspiration photo for almost every inch of the space. So that keeps, that really drives me that kind of, and when people walk in and go, there's nothing like this in Charlotte. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a bar like this. That's <laughs> like, ah, yes, thank you. That felt so good. Thank you for saying that. Right. It's like, this doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. This it certainly doesn't look like any other place. Charlotte looks, you know, and I don't want to knock Charlotte. I love living here and I like the city and I think it's growing and turning cool. But when people go, you know, you built something that doesn't look like a Charlotte bar. I'm like, great, because I didn't try. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to satisfy, hey, what is the profile of Charlotte people? Because I need to make sure I'm successful and I need to make sure I'm hitting that demographic. You gotta hit that Southern style. Did not do that <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, we, we have animal heads on the wall. Yeah, there's yeah, none of that in my thinking. About my southern only yeah. thinking style. is, well, I like it and, and do I think it's cool and does my wife like it and then, you know, this is important to me. If I, you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, that was VBGB too. Like, I didn't invent Beer Garden. I just kind of saw what was, you know, happening in, in New York and mm -hmm. um, in other places and kind of did my own version of it. I did, you know, a modern, updated version, a very contemporary version of a, a beer garden. It's not a traditional European version. So I just kind of do what I want to do and then yeah, hope other people like it, which is, I don't know, a lot of people do that in life. I, I think a lot of creative people, I think a lot of, you know, even my movie making background, people go, this is the movie I want to make and for my reasons, because, you know, I went through this and I'm going to make a movie about it. So hopefully some other people have gone through that too. So that's, I just do what I want to do. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I don't say, well, I'm going to build the weirdest bar on the planet. I'm right. not going to, you know, I, I still get, I think I have, I'm in touch with what, you know, what people like, you know. People like game arcades, of course they do. People mm -hmm. like doing karaoke, of course they do. They like still want a cool bar to sit around that looks cool. Yeah, pizza. I mean, it's not. It's not a bad guy to work for. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a. If that's you know. that's the company motto and vision, and it's a pretty sweet gig. Yeah, I mean, you know, just believe in yourself and do what you want. And then I enjoy <laughs> the fun, weird things like you know, um, the library is hard to, hard to find. Like I put a lot of thought into. It's not only a hidden library behind a bookcase. It's kind of in a weird spot that you would think that or even be a door. You know, I would think that other people would be like, oh, they can, they'll never find it this way. I'd be like, that's the exact reason I'm putting it down the hall in the corner and it's not even lit well. Right. That's my thing. And so, you know, every night I watch people go, this is so cool. Oh my God, I've never seen this before. Am I supposed to be back here? <laughs> that's the bond, like, that is the bond that I wanted to create. So I really enjoy that. That's, so there's my passion is just, you know, those moments. You know, um, I, I said to Matt a few times when we had been open a few weeks, I go, isn't this so cool? Because I'm hearing this is the best pizza I've ever had. And I don't want to like try to, I'm not that person that, you know, goes out saying, hey, come eat our pizza because it's awesome. You come and find out yourself. You might think it is, maybe it isn't. But I've heard out of people's mouths in the last few weeks, this is the best pizza I've ever had. So for those people, Matt, has, you know, Scott, all of us have set the standard for what their favorite pizza is in their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and kind of surreal. Uh, you know, six months ago, Matt, Scott, Kara, I had never made pizza, done pizza, been in the pizza business. So to hear that, it's an amazing, like, I had a moment with Matt. I was like, and that's so weird to, like, think 
we didn't any this wasn't our ballpark and mm -hmm. now some people you know on a nightly basis are going wow this is unbelievable this is the best pizza i've ever had that's a cool that's the payoff inspirational. that's the payoff that's the payoff right there that's the payoff it's that's and to see people having an awesome time and just really enjoying themselves and putting it all together seeing the empty warehouse then seeing it built and then but that first day where we actually started letting people in and people were coming in and enjoying themselves all around that was like oh man this well, we now it's happening never, we've you still have never said well i don't know people's feedback is this we should change this or people didn't like we've never done that it's Kara, you me scott sitting around going this is the pizza we like. We think this is good. We've never said, ah, oh, Charlotte probably wants this. Right. Or we really need to kind of compromise and give them this. Never. We've never done that. I don't, you know, that's the bottom line. It's one of those, I don't think we're compromising to uh, fit the masses. We're just doing what we think is good. No. And I, I enjoy, you know, kind of standing out a little bit like, yeah. i don't want to do what everyone else is doing all right. the time i'm not trying to be different or anything right. we just did things the way we wanted to right. but um i don't want to be a dime a dozen i want to be you know i just want to do what we do and do it well i right. guess and keep doing it isn't that the goal <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah well it's, it's very supportive you know we i'm, I'm also proud as a as a as my wife and i as, a, as bar restaurant owners that you know we employ 60, 70 people. That's kind of a weird, sometimes I don't think about that, you know, I give a, a job opportunity and a cool place to work to people and make a living. Like, that's just, I don't really have that perspective sometimes that that's part of the thing that I contribute to Charlotte and the community is, you know. That's a big part for me. I love coaching the kids that come in. Like, the, my best hires are the ones that want to do this for a career and right. have minimal experience and they just want to learn. And, you know, we've got... What, three or four Johnson and Well kids that graduated and then came on with us, and now they're managers. They're running shifts next door sure. at BBGB, sure. but they have the passion. You know, that's the right. one thing you, that you can't teach. If you have that and you bring that to the table, we can learn anything. We can teach you anything we want. But it's like, you know, I just I love our family and our community. We have the VBGB kitchen is strong. You know, this is a new sure. one. And I hope to do the same thing over here uh, with my employees. But I really, I really love teaching people and younger kids more than anything because I remember what it was like to be the young kid in the kitchen constantly especially when you start when you're 16 years old for 550 at a sagebrush by the way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you get the bug and it becomes your career or you don't right so it's kind of fun to see the inspiration of the young kids in the kitchen and the I don't know the people that go to places like Johnson and Wales I think a lot of them picture themselves ending up in some high-end fancy restaurant <laughs> as soon and as that's done the, and, the model right. I think that I sometimes I, I wish more than would go hey the bottom line is amazing great food it doesn't it can be in a place that has picnic tables right you know they all watch too many TV shows in my opinion that they all end up want to be some celebrity chef and it's like the goal shouldn't be that the reality of that is like one in a million that yeah. this is the more practical place where they'll end up and if they could get that in their head that they can be a great chef in a small town be the big fish in a small pond sure and have a great reputation and be chef mad in charlotte that everybody knows and say wow that guy does an amazing job with you know what's considered bar food you know we don't call it bar food we have a different level and we take and people like i don't expect chicken wings to be this good what did you do so different how did you make <laughs> chicken wings so better that's a goal for a chef isn't it yeah shouldn't that be yeah to be like, unique original and you know Mm -hmm. put out something awesome that people talk about and want to come back and get more of. And there's no guy throwing pots and pans and screaming at you like those TV shows. Exactly. <laughs> like, putting on an app. People go, hey, this is a cool place to work. The bosses are cool. The place is cool. They give me, they get free tickets to all the shows for me. And uh, You have to have positive energy in a kitchen. If you have bad energy in a kitchen, your food sucks. I agree That's that. my opinion. If you have cooks that are in a crappy mood all the time, they're not going to put out the best thing they could put out. And, sure. You know, that just makes its way to the customer, and then the customer is not having a good time. So We always say, um, Caro says, you know, you'll either love working for us or hate working for us. If you're doing your job and you're doing a good job, you're going to go, these people are so cool. But if you're not, we're going to be on you. Of course we're going to be on you. Just to get your job, they normally job. don't last long anyway, yeah. if we have to be on them. But. We're big about the energy. You know, the energy Super. has to be a very upbeat positive. So It does come back around. It does end up in the food. It does end up in the flavors and the quality. Of course, it does. Yeah, that's an interesting observation. You're not sitting there going, oh, "We gotta, we got, we gotta meet this mark money-wise this month. We gotta do this." It's like, no, why don't we just make a great product? Exactly. At the end of the day, people will find us. 
and it'll work itself out as far as making profit and owning a business and be business people. Yes, are we, of course we're business people. We're passionate about what we do and stuff, but do we all, um, there should be more to it and there is for us. It's not just strictly business dollars. Hey Matt, we need to get the kitchen down 10%, go cut some corner somewhere. Um, definitely change that cheese to the cheaper one and you know, find a way to get, make that. We don't, I'm not saying we're not uh, money conscious. We don't we're blow smart. money, we're a, a smart kitchen, but we don't ever as owners come in and say, all right, we need to make 10% um, more. Or we need to, you know, uh, squeeze a penny somewhere, figure yeah. out, how, you know, get a better, get a cheaper cheese. No, we don't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. That's very well said. Well, we're getting towards the end here, and we're already circling the drain to where I like to end up. Great. Yeah, it's, 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 basically, it's basically like I, I get people from all walks of life. That's cool. Um, You're not going to body slam us, are you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but it is the, mil it is the million dollar bomb. question. It is the million dollar question that could spoil this whole conversation <laughs> if I answered wrong. Could we fake it, though? <laughs> I, 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 I don't do that. I see Tom in a headline. My life, say, look, I was a body slam. <laughs> Jake Manning. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but anyways, I, I get people of all walks of life, of varying degrees of like restaurateurs, uh, yep. wrestlers, comedians, politicians, awesome. uh, musicians, all different people. And I sit down and I have a conversation with them for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And I get into this point right here or ask them about the question of success. What does it mean to you? Do you know exactly what it is? Do you feel like you're living it right now? Do you, is there a dollar, match, a dollar amount attached to it? Um, is there any way to really achieve that? When I say the word to success to both of you gentlemen, what pops in your head? I'll let Matt answer the first one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, for me, all I can really think of, success. Um, the drive to continue to move forward and better yourself. And if you're on that path already, you're already successful. But if you're not content with that and you want to keep pushing forward to keep continuing to be successful, I just, I don't know if this makes any sense. It makes sense to me. So I guess that's all that really matters. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's just really all about drive. Do I feel successful? Absolutely. Uh, am I happy with all my accomplishments in life as a, as a dad? Uh, and as a chef and as a human being and a friend, yes. Uh, do I want to continue to be successful and maybe perhaps more successful, meaning achieve more things, achieve more goals? Yes. Is it money driven? Not so much. I mean, money's money's money. It is what it is. And it, it, you got to provide for your family and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, just more so being happy with myself and, and personal accomplishments uh, and a decent human being. A good one at that, more so than anything. Follow that oh, up. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> really well put. Um, wow, I don't think that deep. <laughs> but that was really well put. What Matt question. said. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Um, I might circle back a little bit to what I said earlier. Success to me is um, having a place that you know people really enjoy. Um, as far as a business owner, people that go, wow, I really love your place. I like what you guys do. The idea that we employ a whole bunch of people that make a living, that's a, a definition of success. That people have met at our place and got married at our place and have now have babies. Like that kind of, that's a feeling of success in a way. Like they were so happy that they, you know, had that moment where they met somebody and then they decided to actually have their wedding at our place and just, I don't know, those are successful moments. There's been times where, um, it's been really busy over here. Um, this happened not too long ago to Kara and I, and we uh, had to park across the street, and we walked across the street, and we looked back, and it was a surreal moment. Like, there was our business, and there was like all these people, and the music was pumping, and there was people coming down the sidewalk and coming and going, and I was kind of like, whoa, we own that place over there. That's <laughs> wild. Like, look at that place, because that looks like a really fun, cool place, and I've never, it's perspective. So. That's part of the success, that the feeling success was that one of those moments like that. But it's also the moments where, you know, I see, I watch Matt's kids growing up and we have families that, you know, and their sons and our bartenders and we watch the kids grow up and everybody's still happy and working for us and, and say, you know, I like this place and can we all make a little more money as we go along? Sure, you know, that's a definition of, you know, success, but it's more about the feeling of, I like doing this, this is kind of fun. Um, you know, there are times where it's really hard and difficult, but yeah. you know, that's it's supposed to be. I'm not no one says success or doing good in business is easy. I mean, there's been the early days were really, really hard. Of course, really hard. But um, so 
the success is, uh, I think, a little all of it, you know, and the, that feeling of somebody three, two weeks in going, wow, it's the best pizza I've ever had, or hey, your place is, I love coming here, and I've been coming here for years, and I want to introduce myself. I get that a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, and people go, oh, you're, um, I can't believe you're the owner of this place. You know, I've never met the owner of a bar in Charlotte. Like, I'm like, that's weird to me. Like, they're like, yeah, you know, there are these corporate places, and the owner is off somewhere else, and there's 20 of them, and it's not that, you know, that I think I, I'm still here, you know, meeting people and talking to people. So that kind of is a feeling of success. When people go, I love your place, I know who you are, or I didn't know who you are, but thank you, this is cool. Those are my moments of success and gratification. And so. Good. That's my basic answer. I love it. It's great, guys. <laughs> um, Thank and you. This has been cool. Bob. Yeah. I love if this. If there's anything you guys want to get out there about, like, you know, located online presence, uh, please, anything you want to plug about? I mean, we just started slinging no. whole pies. But that's about <laughs> it. Come and get one. <laughs> I think it's one of those. Uh, it, no. We'll you know, see you soon, guys. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, come check. Just come check it out. It's a new please. Place. Come, check it out. That's, come hang out. Let's do this. I let the place speak for itself. Well, Matt, Tom, thank you very much for taking thank time out of your busy day. This was fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really cool. Thank you. Love it. Cool.